I'm going to call to order uh, the meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board of uh, June 2nd, 2014. Um, our first order of business uh, tonight, sorry we're starting a little bit late, my apologies, uh, stuck in a little bit of traffic on 128 on the way, um, is an environmental design review hearing to grant special permit for Verizon Wireless rooftop equipment at Greater Boston Motorsports, 1098 to 1100 Mass Ave. And I'm um, going to have the applicant uh, come forward, please. Um, but while you're getting ready, um, I think we're also going to ask the uh, director of planning uh, to go over her report as well. Sure. So, um, <laughs> I'm sure they will be. So, uh, why don't we have you introduce yes. yourself? Uh, Good start. evening, my name is David Klasnick. I'm an attorney representing Verizon Wireless. Thanks for meeting you, too. Did you want me to go first? Yeah, sure. Why don't you start with, with what you're proposing, and then uh, oh, I'll, I'll have uh, staff get the uh, report that they have. So. Yes. Well, once again, good evening. Uh, Verizon Wireless has filed an application, as the chairman has uh, just read into the record, to uh, co-locate a wireless telecommunications facility on the rooftop of the existing building located, I think it's known as the Greater Boston Motor Sports Building, um, at uh, 1098 1100 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, in regards to the relief that has been requested is, as far as the special permit with the environmental design review, I mean, there was some discussion where we went back and forth a little bit. I think there's been some delegation of some of the wireless uh, review authority amongst the Board of Appeals and, and this board. But the determination was made, um, you know, working with Carol and, and Mike Bryan and uh, Douglas Hein, Town Council, regarding the exact correct way to, to file this application. So we did go forward with the environmental review uh, Special permit, and, and looking at the uh, and looking at the bylaw under under section 5.11b, uh, essentially this is an allowed use as uh, as Carol outlined in her in her staff report to the board. Uh, wireless telecommunications facility in the business for zoning district is an allowed use. So Verizon Wireless is proposing something that's recognized by the bylaw as consistent with its standards. In regards to the actual requirements for environmental design review and special permit, what we did in those packets that you had there is we went through, I think, and put together a project brief uh, where we described compliance with both the special permit standards under, uh, let's see, was it 10? It was 10.11 yeah, 10 and also 11.06 in environmental design. So what we tried to do was go through each one of those criteria and show how we met that. In regards to the actual facility that we're proposing, this is a copy from the plans that were submitted uh, to the board. Uh, initially, I would just note, I'm going to block the camera, but initially I would just note that there are existing wireless service, as, as noted in, in the staff memo, there are existing wireless facilities located at this particular location. Uh, right here is a facility that I understand now Sprint utilizes. Um, you know, it's a fully screen. They have an equipment shelter on the roof. They have their antennas. And in addition to that, uh, T-Mobile, subsequent to that installation, they come before this board and uh, received approval to, to co-locate on this building as well. Uh, this is one of their antennas. They have some equipment on the lower roof. And then, I think that's one of their antennas there. So this facility and over here as well, and uh, T-Mobile antenna. So this is a building that it currently does have wireless service uh, uh, providers. In regards to the Verizon Wireless facility, Verizon Wireless is proposing to, similar to what Sprint has done, is to uh, offer a fully screened facility. So Verizon Wireless deploys a total of 12 antennas with remote radio heads, cabling, and other uh, necessary materials. But the eight of the antennas will be on this, here's Massachusetts Avenue, eight of the antennas will be located behind the screen wall. As you can see, it has two sides here. It's 10 feet long by three feet wide. That will enclose eight of the 12 necessary antennas. And then to support the facility, Verizon Wireless installs an equipment shelter, similar to what next, uh, I mean, what Sprint has installed up there. Uh, it contains its radio equipment. It also contains an emergency backup generator that's a natural gas power, and that's necessary for service reliability at the facility in case there is a disruption of power. It's not used for you know, normal operation. It's only there. Uh, for emergency uh, backup situations. 
and in addition to utilize that as a platform, Verizon Wireless is proposing to install its other four antennas uh, once again behind a screen in the area on, on the side of the uh, of side of the equipment shelter. So that's you know that's the roof plan or the bird's eye view if you will. And then in addition, we have included uh, an elevation an elevation station view. Once again, these are the T-Mobile antennas, and this in front of Verizon Wireless's shelter is that uh, Sprint enclosure, very much closer to Massachusetts Avenue. So that's Verizon Wireless shelter located about the same height as the existing uh, Sprint facility. And then there were the other antennas that I had made reference to, close behind the screen wall. So those are the additional eight antennas that Verizon Wireless were proposing to deploy at this location. So I think it's a facility that's kind of consistent with what's already been located there. Um, in addition, Verizon Wireless provided uh, photo simulations uh, with, with the packet. I don't know if the board wants to go over those or if you've already reviewed those. They're at, um, they're at tab three to the application. Should we be using tab three or the more recently dated one? The dates are different though. Yeah, no, I would use the more recent one. That's our individual package. So what Verizon Wireless has provided is uh, four separate views from various locations. On the front cover is a photo location map, one, two, three, four. The first one is from 35 Quincy Street or the proximity of 35 Quincy Street. Uh, location one. It shows the it shows as the as the uh, as the building exists, and then if you flip over to the next page, <clears throat> what this shows is uh, the uh, the screened antennas on the corner there, and then also peeking above the roof line a little bit is the Verizon Wireless shelter. The next slide is uh, from the proximity of 12 Higgins Street, the other location, and right there you, you don't really have. Uh, much visibility of the Verizon Wireless facility because it's kind of blocked by the Sprint facility. The next one is uh, from across the street. Once again, existing conditions, and then it shows Verizon Wireless's equipment shelter there to the left, and the screened antennas to the right. And then the last one is from Massachusetts Avenue, uh, right across the street, and it shows once again. You can see that the, uh, the, once again, the Sprint equipment blocks the Verizon Wireless shelter, but you can see the proposed uh, corner mount. So that's um, sort of a visual analysis. And then in addition in the packet, what we tried to include was uh, some detailed coverage maps and also an RF affidavit certified by the RF engineer, which essentially provides evidence to the support of the need for the facility to satisfy coverage and capacity issues that Verizon Wireless is exposed to experience in this particular area. So I think what we've tried to do is put together a comprehensive presentation of the facility and why we need the facility. And uh, I think at this point we're available to try and answer any questions. Um, before we start, I, I, in my rush, I, I failed to mention that uh, we are missing one um, board member this evening, Andy West, uh, couldn't be here tonight which means that there's four of us uh, here this evening. Um, and uh, it's been one practice of, of this board uh, in order for uh, a special permit to be granted in, under the environmental design review, we need four out of the five uh, members, which means that you need a unanimous uh, approval tonight in order to go forward. Do you, do you want to continue with the hearing? I should have said this up front. No, I was made um, aware of that. I didn't know if he could review the tape and uh, if that's something that Arlington does. It's not typically something that we would do uh, on something like this. I mean, if it goes further than tonight, that that's that's a possibility, so that he could then uh, take part in it afterwards. Um, but I, I did want to make you aware that you would need all four uh, to um, go in for whatever uh, whatever decision it is. Uh, Thank you. So I appreciate that. you want to continue then? So. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, once again, I apologize. I should have done that up front. Uh, just kind of rushing in here. I uh, just realized it as you were speaking. So, um, thank you. Before I open it up for the board, I'd like to ask, uh, the planning director has done a little bit of, of, or not a little bit, a lot of work uh, with respect to this particular site and on this particular application. And so I want to uh, um, uh, 
open it up to Carol to uh, present us. Um, one strange thing that you may want to go into is, is just a little bit of the history, and that this is a little bit of a continuation of that here, uh, because of how it was first presented and, and some of that. So. Uh, this application came in in January, and it was uh, unclear whether it should go to the Zoning Board of Appeals or to the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Uh, a couple years ago, uh, the town meeting moved the authority for reviewing special permit applications for wireless antennas to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, but because this is subject to prior environmental design review special permits, uh, quite a number of um, environmental design review special permits, and because on its own it would qualify by its presence on Mass Ave as a property subject to environmental design review, it was ultimately decided that it would properly be heard by this board. So if there are any questions about that, I'd be happy to try to address them. But that's, I hope that explains why. It's before the redevelopment board. Uh, the properties at Greater Boston Motorsports um, are uh, actually 1092, 1098, 1100 Mass Ave. And there's a long history of special permits and variances on this property going back to about 1982. Um, I actually don't know how many there are. There are many, many special permits. I counted about five for wireless carriers. There's also a, a, a long history and pattern of violations of general bylaws, particularly for parking, and zoning bylaws, um, and uh, concerns that prior special permit terms and conditions have not been met. And this is a chronic problem, uh, supported by the staff of the Board of Selectmen and the Community Safety Officer and the Director of Inspectional Services. The, in short, um, some of the primary concerns are there is a requirement for on-site parking for some of the business uses in the building. And there is an on-site parking plan. It appears that the parking spaces on-site are occupied by merchandise vehicles and quite possibly repair vehicles that are awaiting uh, repairs or waiting to be picked up by their owners. But it, it's also possible that there's a, uh, at least one temporary structure at the back of the lot mm -hmm. occupying some of the required on-site parking spaces. Uh, there's also a requirement that as the property owner leases to new tenants that they are supposed to come before the board to be sure that the additional on-site parking or the, or the dedicated on-site parking for that business use are accommodated on the site. Uh, it doesn't appear as though um, a couple of the tenants were reviewed by the board or presented to the board. So there's also a concern that um, there may be additional park, on-site parking needs beyond what is approved. But uh, we don't know that because they haven't been presented to the board. The general bylaw concern is with regard to on-street parking. Uh, Greater Boston Motorsports must be doing very well because they have a great deal of merchandise um, vehicles displayed on a routine basis on Mass Ave parking spaces. And when they are ticketed, they pay the fine and they put the vehicles back out. Um, I have noticed in the last week or so that there haven't been as many vehicles out on the street. Uh, that's good, but this is a problem that's gone on for many years, and it, it does improve, it seems, when there's a permit um, that's just been issued or about to be um, heard, um, and then it's, it's back to the case where there's merchandise vehicles on the street. And um, this is a, an, a, a concern in this area because there are other businesses, there are crosswalks, and there's a, it's, a, it's a walking route to the middle school, which is just up the hill on the side street. There's an awful lot of pedestrian activity in that area. Um, people of all ages, middle school children, elderly, there's a lot of elderly crossing at that intersection. So it makes for a very kind of congested and chaotic area. Um, and like I said, this has gone on for quite a long time. Typically, the board in the past has sought to bring a property into compliance when you're preparing to hear or when you're in the middle of a hearing. Um, in a couple 
instances in the director's report, the board is supposed to review the proposal against a number of standards that are found in the zoning bylaw. And I feel that in some of these instances, the intensity of use on the site prevents the, the board, in my view, from being able to say that the standards are being met. So I've advised, I've recommended to the board that perhaps they could try to seek compliance through Mr. Klasnick, who has permission to act as the owner's agent, and to consider whether the property could come into compliance for a period of time, and that that could be certified by the Director of Inspectional Services, and that the, um, if the applicant is willing, that if you wanted to come up with a period of time to give the property owner some time to come into compliance, and for that compliance to be lasting, and then at a time certain, revisit, in other words, to continue until then, and then have the board act on the proposal at that time. That's a thumbnail sketch of the direct of the circumstances on the site um, and my recommendations to the board. Thanks, Carol. Um, before I go to public comment, why don't we go uh, down, the, down the line for questions and, and comments by board members. Thank you. Um, this is classic. Uh, I'm empathetic for the position that you're in uh, in that I think that most of my comments or questions really relate to the property owner and the what I would call the primary use of, of the site. Um, and I certainly understand your position representing Verizon. You're not here to necessarily explain away all the past uh, sins, if you will, at the, at the site. But nevertheless, it, it seems as um, the director mentioned, we've had an ongoing series of issues at this site. Uh, and really very little effort to bring the use back into compliance with the terms of the special permit. Um, and for me, I have a very hard time voting to grant a special permit when the underlying special permit that governs the, the, the site is perpetually in violation. Um, some of the conditions that the director mentioned may not exist in the wintertime because it just isn't conducive uh, to putting the merchandise on display. But when it's not in, uh, when the weather's okay, uh, the motorcycles come right back out there. They block the access to what are supposed to be the parking spaces. Um, my understanding is that when this has been brought to the attention of the zoning enforcement officer, uh, the uh, employees at the site have been hostile. Um, certainly I can't imagine members of the public coming in and trying to convince the staff to allow parking there. So I think we have something like 19 parking spaces, none of which are being used. And the impact of that is felt by the neighborhood on the surrounding streets. Um, it's a safety issue. It's unfair to the other merchants in the area. Um, so. You know, I think that something really needs to be done here. And I would say not only are we looking at a period of time to judge whether or not the property will be brought back into compliance, I would go further. I would ask that something like a consent decree be entered into by the property owner um, that would give some real teeth to continuing to allow access to the property. Um, I do have a few questions about your proposal. I don't know if it's even, you know, my, my feeling is that maybe it's better to put those off for another day because I, in my view, I don't think we, we even reach speaking to the proposal until the property is back into compliance with the existing special permit. Well, if I may, um, I mean, I have, I mean, I was made, made aware of the ongoing violations by Carol and so I undertook a pretty extensive search of the files. And I guess I was a little uh, surprised that I didn't really find anything recent in regards to code violations. So some of the difficulty we had working with the property owner was that we were not able to really identify any recent code violations where they had specifically been noticed and provided with the opportunity to cure. 
So I guess that was part of part of the difficulty I had as far as mm -hmm. trying to trying to direct the property owner to, to resolve issues that I had trouble identifying. I mean, I think the most recent thing I could find went back into 1991, looking at both the building department files and the uh, and the planning files. Um, so I mean, it sounds to me like you already have authority under your bylaw bylaws to enforce these provisions, and I guess I'm a little concerned or I guess I have to ask why is it necessary to hold up Verizon Wireless application because it's completely independent. The town can certainly enforce its code requirements for parking on the street and everything else even if Verizon Wireless's facility is installed. So um, I guess the concern is how long would we have to wait? We certainly want to work with the town to do this in a responsible manner. But I mean, it seems like this is almost an open-ended requirement. I don't know. And I mean, Verizon Wireless has already waited six months and it's filed its application to get to this point. I mean, I guess it was my understanding that the application, based on my conversation with the town council, is that the application would be reviewed on its merits as opposed to extraneous issues related to the property. Whereas I said, the town already has the mechanisms to enforce those provisions. I don't know if it's enough. You know, this is a quasi-judicial body that's, you know, would act upon the applications that were presented to it. So, uh, so I, I would hope, you know, I'd be interested in whatever comments you have about this in case we do need to make some adjustments to anything. If, if that's something the board is prepared to do, that I think that would be helpful to us. Yeah. As we, uh, if I could just for a second. So, so I, I think there might be a little bit of a disconnect here. I think to say that that it's a wholly separate notion of what you've come before us and everything that's gone on in the past. When you're talking about the intensity of use, as Carol said, of that building, and the inability to get control of that intensity of use, putting one more use in there doesn't seem to make a lot of sense now, does it? So I think that's one of the things. And to say that it's completely unrelated, when someone needs to construct what you're proposing, and by the way, it's it's quite a bit of construction. Uh, it's not just tossing up an antenna. Um, and to say that you know that kind of construction is going to be you know well served for the neighborhood and everything else, as well as whatever service needs to happen. I mean, you've just heard there were no parking spaces down there. Where is a service vehicle going to uh, going to be to service the different uh, towers and everything else? Do you have that in your application? I'm not sure that you do. So. To say that they're completely disassociated, the one thing I want to be careful of here is that they are associated. This use that you're talking about is another intensive use of a building that I think, as you heard from the director, is already being used very intensively and quite possibly, you know, as we're told by the enforcement officer and the community safety officer and everybody else, at a level that is much higher than what has been permitted at this point in time. So I, I do want to be a little bit careful in that in in saying that this use that you're talking about is somehow disassociated with the building, like somehow we can just toss it up there and, and everything will be fine. I think that the whole building and the use of the building and everything else has to come into our thinking as we go through this hearing. So I I I don't want you to think that we're we're either saying that all of these things that happen over here but have nothing to do with what you're trying to do over here, you know, or what you're being held, you know, responsible for. No, it's it's a building. It's a building, there are many uses to it, and here's another one. So um, anyway, that's just one thing I guess I didn't Yeah, I mean how I guess I just wanted to, to understand how can we help the board then in the town work with the property owner um, as far as is that something where you would have him contact well, someone specific at the time? See, town? and this is this is the issue. Is we're we're not the enforcement body, right? Exactly. So uh, have you you spoken to the enforcement officer and the community uh, safety officer and everyone else about the building? Well, I've spoken with the director of instructional services, uh, Mike, okay. and uh, with Carol, and the town council. And uh, about the uses of the building? Yes, about generally the code violations and trying to get an understanding of what the code violations are. And I, I know I'm, and I understand that there's 
issues with uh, merchandise, and so I, I had an understanding of what I didn't have, I guess, was a current uh, example that I could present to the property owner. And you asked, you asked Mr. Byrne about that? Yes. You asked him for an example of that? Well, what I did is I looked it through the files. But you didn't talk to him about prior to coming to this meeting? Well, I've spoken to them, but I don't know why I specifically asked them for a code violation. What I did is I went down and I reviewed the building department files, and all there were were some building department cards for building permits. That's all that was presented to me. And the community safety officer, you didn't go over the community safety building? Well, it's on street parking, that's the issue. So I think that would be a real good place to start as okay. well. So that would be the person that we should have the property owner work with? Uh, I, I assume so. I mean, that is the, or have the person come before here and, you know, if, if you're not the one that can kind of tell us that these things are going to be corrected, mm -hmm. but you are their agent. Well, I am given authorization to represent Verizon Wireless and the property owner in the context of this limited application. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not the attorney for the property owner. I'm only the attorney for Verizon Wireless, and we have authorization from the property owner to proceed forward with this. I, I don't have any authority to. Right. And in my conversations with Carol and with Michael earlier about this particular hearing, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think we suggested that the property owner and their counsel coming might make some sense. I think, didn't we? That wasn't, I don't think that was communicated to me. No? Okay, I'm sorry, then that's my mistake. I mean, my hope is to keep all the issues out of this. Right, and, that, and I understand that, but I think the so problem... Clearly that's not going to happen now, so now we need to figure out how to get from yeah. where we are now to, to there. And, I, and to we might not even be the best body to figure that out. So, but uh, but anyway, so I hijacked enough of that, so I apologize. So, no, well, just to add to what Mike was saying, uh, um, the uh, property owner had been before the board, probably, I'm going to guess, back in 2009 and 2010, uh, on a special permit hearing, I believe, for a new tenant in the building, which they withdrew that permit for the special out, uh, for their new special permit or revised special permit um, because similar issues were brought to the property owner's attention uh, and for whatever reason the property owner abandoned the petition. I don't mean to suggest why, but um, my sense was they didn't want to change the uh, MO in terms of the operation of the, of the property. Um, do you want us to comment on the specifics of the uh, of the application, or is it perhaps better served for us to uh, talk about how to get the property owner to comply with the underlying special permit? Um, well, I mean, whatever the pleasure of the board is, I we did bring some folks here. If there were specific questions, that we wouldn't necessarily need to bring them back again. I, I don't know if that's helpful to the board, um, or if. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I've reviewed the plans, and um, it, if you look at, I guess it's sheet three, there's plan A1. Uh -huh. It's the third. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, the stealth corner penthouse that's at the uh, northwesterly corner of the building. I guess the elevation is, yeah, the upper left-hand corner. Uh -huh. Now, and it's also shown on the elevation plan, the actual antenna are behind the penthouse uh, screen. Is that? Yes, everything will be enclosed. Okay, so the, the dashed lines basically show us where they're going to be located, but they're, they're, they're not hanging on the outside of the, of the, the stealth wall. No. Okay. And is that just, is, is, the, is the penthouse an actual structure, or is it just a wall that extends up from the it's just facade? A, it's just a RF-friendly plastic, if you will, mm -hmm. for want of a better word, that's painted to match and would be tied in some of its you know, structural, okay. structural sounds. And that is eight feet tall, so it is 
prompted. You'll be able to, that's within public view as you walk down this NASA or yeah. Quincy Street. Um, and it's on all sides, not just on the corner, right? No, I think it's just on the corner. Is it just the corner, the two sides? Yeah. It doesn't go around the back? Well, I think the idea is to create sort of a box. They, they, do, they do dimension. I'm not sure of the box. So it goes oh, around the box. Okay. 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 Sometimes they do just do a screen, but I think yeah. because of the visibility here, they decided to do a box. Okay. Okay. And then the shelter that's in the back quadrant of the building mm -hmm. um, is. Ten, 10 feet, 7 inches tall, or I, in your application, so I guess you're comparing it to the existing shelter, which is 13 feet, right? Um, well, what we did is we reworked this a little bit, yep. and then we were able to reduce that shelter down to 10 feet, 7 inches. Okay. So originally it was going to be a bit taller. Um, but basically it's, as you can see, by the elevation view, that's the sprint. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same height as the sprint uh, okay. box. But according to the photo simulations, it's still visible from public view. Yes. Now, there's other Actually, in this one, you see that it's not a box over here. It's actually these two screens <laughs> on the other corner. The one that we and this would be painted to match the existing color of the building? Yeah, we tried to, to match uh, by using the different in those color um, I guess those are the sprint I mean, the, uh, it's like a T-Mobile one that's already in a box right here. The one that's, yeah, it's it's almost looks like it's hanging yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's, that's T-Mobile, so the idea is to kind of match that. Mm -hmm. And also the sprint uh, box, the same color. Um, my only comment is I, I appreciate the idea of using the same color, but um, you know these are fairly prominent little structures, so they're not all that stealthy. <laughs> uh, I, I think it is kind of visible on, on the, on, on the uh, you know, from from the street. Um, I didn't really have any comments though on more of the technical matters. Uh, it looks like at least, you know, the conclusions are what I can read and understand. And it sounds like in terms of uh, the safety of the equipment and so on, uh, you're within your, your FCC, um, FCC guidelines. So that part doesn't worry me. Um, my main concern, though, is with the underlying special permit that uh, governs the site bringing the property into compliance so we don't have one more use that's adding on. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Christine? So I want to thank you for your very complete application. You put a lot of good information together from noise reports to dimensions on all the equipment and sizes. I wish you had put the heights on the plan and on some of your, your um, graphics, the before and afters. That would have been helpful. I think your last submission had the heights. But this one at none of the heights. If you come back to the board again, it might be helpful to put those heights on. Okay. Um, just so we don't have to search for them. I'd like to echo both of my colleagues' sentiments about the, the past violations. I'm especially concerned when I read that the, the, um, the officers who went to confront the owner were physically threatened. I think when it gets to that point, this this board can't in good conscience add any type of use or even hear any type of additional use on this property. So my question to you, is there another property in the vicinity that could meet your needs? Because of the long-standing issues with this property owner, there may be no foreseeable end date as to when he will come into compliance. Your project is extremely important. Keeping service, both during emergencies and on a regular daily basis, I understand the need. The government understands the need. That's why they passed the bills that they did, or whatever they were called, the acts that you referenced. So 
So I understand the the imminent need for your facility, and I also understand that by you know lead standards and everything else, it it makes a lot of sense to be on the same building with other service providers in this particular instance because it could be a lengthy time and you need your service up and running soon. I would ask if there is another property that you can start to explore or maybe you've already explored a property. I don't know what makes this property special and why this property needs to be used. Well, I mean, <clears throat> Verizon Wireless did look at other options and you essentially, I think, need three components to come together. It has to work from an RF perspective. It has to, it has to be a willing landlord, uh, right. a property owner, and it has to be constructible. So Verizon Wireless did look at some other locations, um, but there were various problems with the constructability of the locations. Um, I think we looked at 39 Hospital Road and uh, 37 Drake Village Road and 468 Mystic Street. And they were sort of unsuitable as to location and height as the information that came back. But we certainly take what you're saying and you know, certainly go back and try to scrub the area again. I, I think that might be, that would be my mm -hmm. suggestion at this point. I have no issues with your proposal, really. I do have a few other technical questions, but you know, I think it's very sound. It's it's very straightforward. It's very complete. I don't object to the to the view of them because there are others up there. My my largest objection is at this property, at this property owner. Yeah, I guess the only difficulty that you know Verizon Wireless has is they've obviously already invested a great deal of time of and money in this particular location. So, bless you. Bless you. And to, I understand that. To the extent that this can somehow work, I'm sure that would be their first preference. But certainly taking into consideration your comment to go back and look at that. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like this owner, how many years do you think, Carol? Is it over 20? Over 20 years of non-compliance. So, you may be waiting another 20 years if we can't get them under compliance. You know, I, it sounds like it's time for criminal, criminal action, which is a possibility with the community safety officer. And maybe that should but be our suggestion is to start to bring our, them into compliance. That's not our call. That's not our decision to make. We don't have that latitude. But it would be my suggestion at this point if people are being physically threatened. And this, the safety of the public is threatened. I've tried to walk down that sidewalk mm. on a hot summer day with the salespeople out there talking to people selling motorcycles and you can hardly walk. It's ridiculous. And I wondered what was going on with our with our zoning and our enforcement, why that kind of thing is able to happen. It was before I was on this board. So I'm happy to see that now. I can actually say something about it. So that's my biggest concern. My other questions um, and I'm disappointed that the property owner is not here. You could relay that to him. Because I, I don't think this is your issue. This is his issue. And it's a shame that it's falling on you and on your project and the investment that you've already made. So my other question, is a, is a gas power generator normal for a rooftop situation like this, a natural gas? Yes. I mean, they, the only real options they have are diesel, which you have to refuel it. And sometimes they deploy a propane, which wouldn't be a practical solution. So for rooftop, there are, I don't want to say always about anything, there are always natural gas. And I know it's only being used on an emergency basis, but it is being tested once a week also. Yes. Um, and it sounds like that's the noisiest part of the whole thing, and it's also maybe the most dangerous part. Um, well, just in regards to, to the noise, I think, as you noted, we did include an environmental sound assessment that certified compliance. And a lot of effort has been made to mitigate it. Um, I wrote this down so I'd get it right. Um, so first of all, it's inside the shelter, so that <coughs> dampens the noise. Mm -hmm. There's uh, air intake and exhaust is necessary, obviously, because it's a controlled combustible room. But those are going to be treated with what they're called cowling silencers, mm -hmm. so they're baffled and everything. And, uh, and then the exhaust stack is critical silencer. Um, so what we certified in our study, which was conducted um, you know, using actually ambient and then comparing that mm -hmm. based upon manufacturer specifications and details from other locations, was that it would be compliant um, 
Okay. So this isn't an unusual situation. You've used natural gas on. Uh, yeah, every roof has to be and, that, yeah. and they deploy. They won't even deploy site for that. Yeah, it's just it's so important to them to have that natural resource. Yeah, there. and I understand that also. Let's see what other. We're not. Are we going to go through the? You can. The different issues. And most of them go back to the original property owner. The, the lack of parking. You do have somebody who's coming uh, once a month, it sounds like, but you're testing your generator once a week. So it sounds like they might be there more often than once a month. That's actually accomplished remotely. That can be programmed. Oh, it is, okay. We usually program it during daytime hours. It's just fire okay. So your impact, I, I realize, is small um, on this site. But it is additional impact. So I agree with, with both of my colleagues that, that that is an issue. I think that's really all I would have to add. <clears throat> I'm not sure what else is left to add after my three colleagues have spoken so eloquently about the issues at the site. I, too, am very disappointed that the building <coughs> is not here to make an appearance site or to, to give any explanation as to some of the underlying issues. Uh, and the brief that we were given, these go back to 1985. Uh, code violations don't seem to work. Fines don't seem to work. There has to be some other way to get the owner to come into compliance, to listen to not only what, what the members of the town say, but the residents of the Arlington have to say as well. They are the ones who are impacted. I drive by this site fairly frequently, and uh, it is not subject to season whether these mm. vehicles are out there. They're out there year-round taking out parking. It isn't just motorcycles. There are large trailers out there from time to time. There are people all over the street in and out as they're walking around. It's a safety issue as you're driving down Mass Ave, which is, as you know, the main road in the town. It's, it's, it's a problem. And I, like my colleagues, am, am not comfortable with allowing another use here for these, these issues like this. If we're going to talk about timing of Well, I think we're going to listen to public comment. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, sure. That sounds good. <coughs> Thank you for your very Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, we'll probably have some other questions for you in a bit okay. when we start talking about process. Um, okay, so what I'd like to do is work maybe from right to left. Uh, if, you, if you'd like to speak, please uh, raise your hand. I'll call on you. And if you could uh, provide your name and address uh, for the record, that would be great. Okay. Um, okay. Hi, my name is Joshua Fink. I'm the owner of 10 and 12 Quincy Street, uh, which is directly around the corner from the property. Uh, question <coughs> also, part of my property is behind and directly uh, adjacent so to it. Yeah, we're abutting okay. uh, part of it. Um, I can't tonight. Can you spell your name? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, Fink, F I N K. Thank you. That's quite all right. Thank name. No, that's all right. Um, I did have some question. You know, some questions were for Verizon. Uh, you know, I live behind the building, so uh, I'm relatively new to it. I purchased the property in 2011. Um, we do, you know, I, I, you know, we uh, definitely feel the effects of it, uh, mainly on parking on our street uh, from the employees. Uh, I do want to at least speak to uh, a couple of virtues. They have plowed me out a couple of times during the snowstorm, so uh, we've heard about, you know, uh, you know, well, that's good. yeah. I at least want to, you know, individual employees uh, sometimes uh, may act different from the building owner, so I didn't want uh, wish to totally condemn everyone, but we do feel the envir uh, the environmental effects uh, from the parking, as you were discussing uh, discussing earlier. Um, I also went over some of uh, the special permits and uh, impact statements um, earlier and this this was from a impact statement made in uh, filed in August 10th 1981 now I realize it's a while ago but it just says with respect to the uh, localized uh, climate uh, characteristics of this addition is that we wouldn't be subject to any extra noise fumes uh, or any uh, anything of that nature which this admittedly I did hear uh, things directly spoken to, but it was the backup generator that was one of my main concerns um, in this particular uh, pro uh, project. 
I do know that they can be done remotely. I do know that they are run once a week. Uh, but my bedroom is on the same level, uh, and I can show you pictures if you like. Uh, you know, as to that, as, as well as my chi my children's bedroom. Uh, I have two two young children, two and and, and uh, five months. Um, so you know, it, it can affect. Obvious. I did hear you say that they were you were talking about daytime hours, but they take naps too. Um, so I you know I do understand a noise study, uh, but it's different when you live there. Uh, you know, I didn't just at least want to make that assured. I did want to, um, I heard uh, Mr. Mr. Fitzsimmons, that, okay, making sure the, uh, yeah. the name plates are correct. You did say that um, everything was in compliance with FCC, but I, I, I am a little concerned. I know there are already antenna up there, so I'm not trying to come down and sound hysterical, but I do want to, I, I, I was curious if any impact studies had been done or health impact studies just as far as, uh, we are talking about adding 12 uh, antenna. That's a lot. That, that does increase the amount, and I believe in microwaves. Um, as I understand them, or at least some of them are going to be. Some are going to be RF. Some, I mean, uh, no, 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 okay, no. okay. So are all RF. Um, you know, so health health impact studies, even smaller things like my Wi-Fi. It's not the most important thing in the world, but I do pay for it, and it is how I uh, conduct a lot of my business. I work from home a fair amount, um, and yeah, just trying to make sure that that's not the case. So uh, that was mainly my uh, my my reason. These are my neighbors as well. They may wish to speak. Uh, uh, but those were our, our main concerns uh, in regards to this product uh, project. Like I say, the chief most being the generator. I do realize it's a backup generator, but it is right on the level. Um, I have tenants downstairs from me. I live on the second and third floor uh, of my home, so it is right on the level. And I, I will show you, if you wish, uh, some pictures I took just of, out, out my bedroom window. So it, it, it very much affects me, and I do at least need to wanted to make sure that was heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, could I ask one question before, just kind, of, just kind of relaying one of those questions? The, the different uh, FCC reports that we've got, does that kind of take into consideration all the antenna up there? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, great, thank you. Yes, it's a cumulative. It's a cumulative, great, thank you. Thank you, I just want to make that clear. Right. Right so. Yes, please. My name is Brenda Hibbard, H-I-B-B-A-R-D, and we look at the property at 17, Higgins Street, which is about um, the property. Um, just talking about all the violations and whatnot. Um, parking is a huge problem on Higgins Street, but they come with the, with the trailers, and sometimes you can't get down the street because it's a safety issue. And I know when I go home tonight, I'm not going to be able to go to bed till 10 because there's music playing up there. Mm. Talk about code violations, mm. and you can't get in touch with anybody to have them stop the music. The police would call the police before, and the doors are locked. Sometimes I can't even get up there. And it's just one thing after the other. Please don't let this gentleman, this property owner, make more money at our expense. He could care less about the neighborhood. He just wants to make the money from the towers. And my, I have Verizon Wireless, and it works fine. Yeah. <laughs> but he just doesn't care about the neighborhood. And the school kids, too. The school's right there, and there's constantly motorcycles in and out. I get nervous going around the corner. Sorry, I'm Joanna Hibbard. I live Joanna. at 15 okay, Street, same house. Going around the corner every day, coming home from work, I'm like, oh, am I going to hit a motorcycle? Is someone going to fly out from around the corner? Sometimes I can really get through to my own house, and it's frustrating. And I can imagine it would only, you know, wouldn't make things any better, having more antenna up there. Things coming in and out, vehicles coming in and out, it's, it's hard. We thank you for recognizing yeah. the issues that are at the building a lot. Time. Yeah. So it doesn't make us feel quite so. Great. Something, yeah. <laughs> right. We appreciate it. Well, thank you. Thank you. For that. Anybody else? <coughs> Everybody else is with, is with you. you. Okay. <coughs> um, so, I guess I guess the question is, um, and Carol, let me ask you a process question here. Now that we're in the hearing, um, we met our duty with respect to having the hearing, so it won't automatically move forward. I, I guess I just want to make sure that if we if we talk about continuing and whatever else, that, you know, because um, I know there's the requirement that we take action or, you know, the special permit, or it will be deemed, you know, approved or whatever. The board and Verizon, through Mr. Cosmic, uh, issued, executed an extension right. uh, that goes through tonight to, I, I think it's a couple weeks Ye or something. 16th, yeah, I think it was something like and that. And at both parties' option, uh, it, Verizon through Mr. Plasmic and the board are willing to further continue, you have the option to do that. And just so I know, what do we have on the 16th just before we come On the 16th is a environmental design review special permit for um, 
the parking lot for the Arlington Center safe travel changes to create additional parking in front of um, oh, oh, John's John, son's and, and I think it's called also called now. Valvoline. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Valvoline too. Yeah, Valvoline you're right. Is also that yeah. Night. Okay, so it's a lot, but okay. Um, and Andy would have to be here because I don't know. Because you're not going to And be he'll here. have to watch the video. You will have to watch the video. He's going right. to have to Yeah. I think we can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The board is committed yeah. to do that. So I guess the choice is, is to continue. I mean, we could take a vote tonight on the special permit uh, application. Um, I, I'm not sure that might make the most sense at this point for anybody. Uh, or we can continue. Um, so and uh, hopefully you know, you can start a dialogue with the enforcement uh, folks as well as the property owner on the other side or try to try to uh, diplomatically get that done. Um, but um, uh, but I think as of right now, if you'd like me to call for a motion, I'm not sure it's going to be the one that, that no, you necessarily want. So, so, yeah. Uh, no, so, I mean, I'd, I'd love an opportunity to at least try and work through these issues. And as I said, Verizon wants to spend a lot of time after the money on this, so we can help out the town too. I mean, yeah. Do you think two weeks is enough, or would you want to push it out? The only thing I will say is I believe you're talking about the 7th. Um, the 7th of July. 7th is, of July. That's the um, first <coughs> July meeting for yeah. the so two meetings away. Right, right. So it was the it was the July 7th meeting that would be the other one. Um, yeah, I think that would work well. That would give us a little more time. If right. Trying to do it in two weeks is probably Right, and maybe start that dialogue and, and try to try to understand, come up with a plan, yeah. um, and present a plan, and, and, and see what we can do from there. That's great. Um, so, do we have your agreement on a continuation of uh, the June sixteenth up to July? I don't know, three days after that, just so you know, whatever comes. From You're that. going to need. Or, or what do we need for filing? I can do another one. Okay, yeah, we could execute an additional, if you're uh, amenable to that, we could execute an additional extension. Yeah. One way or the other, it's best to have something like that. That would anyway. be great, yes. Mm -hmm. So your next meeting is June 16th? Yes, but there are two hearings um, on that date. I mean, there's nothing to prevent you, I suppose, from, from that, but it yeah, doesn't give you a lot of time to work sure. with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the following meeting is July 7th at this point. Okay. I mean, I just have to, and it's not going to be a problem, but I just have to get permission from Verizon Wireless to do this too. But I'm fine saying it will continue to the 7th. Subject to that, if there's a problem, you know, we can do it on the 16th, I guess. Okay. Yes. Sir. If I could add um, a suggestion, I think it would be um, in your Verizon's interest, and I think because the property owner stands to um, make some additional good income from this lease, I would think that um, Verizon and the property owner could work very hard together. Um, I think that the, the effort is up to the property owner and Verizon at this time. I'm, not, I'm certainly happy to try to assist you with summarizing whatever I can from what I've learned from the files. Um, I think that that effort to demonstrate that the, the property owner is willing to have some lasting compliance on the site. I think that's up to the property owner and to his um, his tenants. I, I think that's right. When I was talking about dialogue, I guess I, I was concerned that you were just kind of going through the files. And I guess that's that's more of what I want. You know, as far as diligence is concerned, you may want to talk to some folks about it as well. So that's more what I want. What I meant. I didn't mean to push on on staff or any of the enforcement officers. You know, the notion that they had to do something. Oh, really I didn't infer that, but the, I I, I, the, I do think that it's important for the uh, owner to get involved. And we request the owner's presence at the next. Well, I, I think we're all saying that it, it probably makes a, a lot of sense. So, okay. So uh, that's great. July seventh. That sounds fine. Yeah, the motion. motion to yeah, I um, I moved that we continue the special per uh, permit hearing for uh, Verizon's uh, uh, proposed site at uh, let's see, address is ten ninety eight dash eleven hundred. 
Okay, 1098-1100 Massachusetts Avenue to July 7th, 2014 at 7 p.m. in this conference. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Appreciate You're it. You're welcome, Dan. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Um, that closes that. Well, that doesn't close the hearing. There's a possibility we have something at 7 that's very short, so we could. You, you, you think it's something. Did we, did, did we call? Yeah, you had something, but I thought it was a Valvoline, and I thought you moved it to the 16. Okay, I, that sounds familiar. Thank you. I think that's what you did. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question for the residents? Are there reports available that they can look at on the, the safety, the reports that we have here? Are they available to the public at this time? Uh, the application at? report? Or no, the, the, the reports the, that uh, Verizon put together with their consultants about the, oh, the dangers right. of the radiation and the, so many there's antennas and the noise. Well, there's a noise impact one that the have you seen right this? It was kind enough to show, show it to me tonight, okay. but I haven't had a chance to. I There's had, another one on the on the antennas that shows that it's well under the. Okay, that's fine. Now, it is, like I say, just, just trying to get a grip on it. You know, there's always a lot of things that go into this, but the more information I can get, the better. I would yeah, appreciate it. Like Thank you. Yeah, I think um, starting in the office, in the office yeah, there'll be an office in the office. It is public, yeah. Copy in the office. It, yeah. there's, it's in here, right? Yeah, it is in there. Would you like to borrow this? Oh, thank you. There you Sorry, go. Very much. Thank you. <laughs> when you're, yeah, I was thinking um, the exact same thing. Since you made the effort to come yeah. and you have Appreciate serious it. concerns, thank you. so Absolutely. our office is right below this. Okay. So at your can share it with your neighbors. All right, thank you. Just so you can put a face on the dog and have it for Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to move on to meeting schedules to try to figure out when we're going to meet, I think, maybe. Although it might be hard without Andy here. Well, I, uh, I, mean, I, I June 16th and July 7th. By yeah, way. so far so good. Yeah. I mean, that takes us through early July. Um, August, we don't have anything scheduled. And if you want, you can see if we get any hearings. Um, Sure. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye you for now. coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I had a, and I may just, I'm not sure where this came from, but my schedule, did we have something for June 23rd? Yes. Yes, okay. we do. Okay. Um, that's a joint meeting. So that's another okay, purpose that's right. for this item, so I'm glad you're mentioning that. June 23rd um, is the joint meeting with the Redevelopment Board and the Board of Selectmen and the Master Plan Advisory Committee. The Master Plan Advisory Committee asked if both boards could meet together mm -hmm. to hear what occurred on the Master Plan through the working paper presentations, what they've heard from the community, and where, where we're headed with the Master Plan, and also to hear both boards discuss this together. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be very um, informative. You're very important stakeholders in this process. The Redevelopment Board would adopt the plan as policy. Town meeting members would endorse it, but of course the Board of Selectmen is very important and very influential too. So uh, th this would be very beneficial to the Master Plan Advisory Committee to have this opportunity. So that's June 23rd. So you'll have three, that's three meetings in June. Yes, and, and just to be clear, I, I don't think I'm going to be at the June 23rd meeting. So. That's the one you won't get. You're right, exactly. So well, once your written comments, then. <laughs> There's a lot of reports As much to as read. I write any of my comments, I shall give you comments <laughs> like that. So. If you haven't been able to keep up with the master plan process and all the working papers that have come out, yeah. and you're waiting till now to, to read them, it's pretty intense. And, uh, yeah. If you want, you, you know, um, I don't know if I'd say this is the, like the cliff notes of the process, but a couple of areas that you could zoom in on would be the issues and opportunities discussion at the end of each working paper, and the if you go to the minutes of the Master Plan Advisory Committee, you can see what the public has said at those uh, presentation sessions for those working papers. Um, in other words, you'll see the dialogue right. in, in response to those issues and opportunities questions. So if you wish to do that before the June 23rd meeting. So having met three times in June, maybe you just want to play it by ear in August and see how vacations and special permit applications fall. 
I, I would definitely do that, and I, I'd actually suggest, as far as special permit applications, if uh, if you've got wind of anything that might be coming out, um, maybe July seventh could be kind of a, a busy schedule. Mm -hmm. um, pack and, it in. Yeah, pack <laughs> it in. Let's see what we can do yeah. um, on July seventh. On July seventh, let's just you know hunker down and and get it done, and see if we can't uh, do a little bit of. Uh, Right now, we don't have anything other than this one. Correct. No, I'm, right? I'm saying to okay. Carol that if she's hearing, if she's getting wind, I think mm -hmm. sometimes you, you hear about things might be coming up, you know, maybe push those people into, okay, get it in so we can get it in on July 7th. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think that, you know, late July, early August, or late, you know, early, late August, the board can have a little surf. Mm -hmm. Holiday. Break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have on the draft schedule, we have a meeting July 21st. Does anyone know that there'll be a way? July 21st? Actually, that, I'll be okay for that one. Okay. I know I'll be okay right. for that one. So if we have anyone desperate the next for an EDR hearing, they, they could... Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we, have, if we have the advanced time for the legal notice. And if we don't... It might be a good jumping off point for the new chair. So. What? Oh, July 21st. What's the new chairman going to jump off from? <laughs> well, that's up to her. I'm already going to do the Board of Selectmen meeting. So. That's right. Yeah. That's all you. Oh, you mean Actually. jumping off like starting my role as chairman? Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. July 21st. Should I put that on my calendar then? Juan Carlos is going to abdicate. Exactly. <laughs> same day. Is that the same day? Me and Juan Carlos? Yeah, I think that's only right. Mm. <laughs> I'll wear my uniform. <laughs> Can I sleep there? <laughs> so you son. ever see him? He's oh, really? Oh, he's got the big old hat. Quite yeah. formal. Right? Yeah, they, quite, yeah, exactly. So. Now, the the meeting with the Board of Selectmen, who's holding the meeting? Are the Board of Selectmen holding it? It is we're a Board joining? of Selectmen meeting. So we're it doing it in there? Yes, we'll be chambers. in the, as far as we know thus far, this was as usual that one of their um, regularly scheduled board meetings uh, the Mass Plan Advisory Committee and the Redevelopment Board will also attend. So, just in terms of logistics, how does is there a table that we're all sitting at, yeah. or is it you know are we standing the, and speaking from the microphone? Or? For our previous joint sessions, I don't recall we've met during my tenure. I don't recall we've met in that room. I can talk to Marie Korpelka and see yeah. what she suggests. Just, just in terms of. Uh, Maybe we facilitating the dialogue, yeah. you know, I think it might be helpful to think a little bit about how to set up a room. Yeah. It's 11 members in the Mass Plan Advisory wow. Committee. I doubt I that's going to all be, yeah. be available. What, yeah. town hall? Hey, you should almost do it down there. Yeah, yeah, the the, the, yeah, the room that we did the service. The here. Oh, you can't do it in the selectmen's room itself. That would be way That's what I thought she was talking about. The room. I'll speak with, Marie or speak with Marie. I'll speak with Marie. With all and Adam. Well, yeah. And I that think other room has terrible acoustics, though. Yeah, it does. The selectmen's hearing room, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, well, and it's not conducive to 11 plus 4, 5 with Carol, and another 6 with Marie on them, so. Your comment on the acoustics was regarding the, the selectmen's hearing room, not the selectmen's right, what do you call that? meeting room. Meeting room, yes. Yeah. yeah, the one with the long table, the oh. old room. That one's very like good. That's, that's the more accommodating about. room. Yeah, that's a lot of people. It's 22 people. It's, it's potentially 22, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah potentially. So you're talking like 15 to 20, probably. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of people. Are there any other rooms? Maybe like the senior center? No. To set it up in there somehow? Well, I think we have to defer somewhat to the Board of Selectmen because it's also one of, they have other regular, a regular agenda Oh, it's a regular, oh, it's yes. a regular meeting. It is. Oh. Oh. And where are we on the agenda? <laughs> oh, so you'll have, you'll have 10 minutes yeah, on the yeah. agenda. Oh. It's a regular meeting date. Mm -hmm. So there's, maybe we should just have. Yeah, she. Should be representatives. We just have a yeah. The chair maybe should just say something that the board has already agreed upon. That means we would have to meet before that to discuss. You're the liaison. I'm the liaison, but I don't know what the board's opinion well, is. Well, we're meeting so on the 16th, so why don't we talk about that? Put it on the agenda. Yeah. Can yeah. you put it on the agenda uh, sure. for the 16th? 
Yeah, because we haven't yeah. really talked about it and gotten feedback well, we should, from everybody. We should do that regardless, whether or not you know it's, it's everybody going or it's um, or it's just a representative. Going. Is, I mean, is the master plan advisory committee going to make a presentation of any sort or I ask think specific they will questions? have to present some something for to launch the dialogue and to solicit input and comments. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, know how yet, they're so, meeting this Thursday. Um, one of the things I, I'll be—I will not be in attendance because I'll be at a conference. But one of the things I want to talk about the chair, to the chairs about is how to frame this to um, generate a, a productive, useful. Right. Right, and talk to Maria about how much time you have. Yeah. Yeah, but only have Before certainly the 16th. Oh, I think you'll have more than five minutes. No, I was only teasing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But it still would be good to know. Yeah. How much time? Room set up? Yeah. And Carol pointed you towards the, the issues and questions at the end of each mm -hmm. section. When you read those, think about are those the best questions? Are there other questions that are missing from this yep. conversation that, in the context of the, of the town? Because I think that's what's being asked at most of the public presentations also. Are there any other issues that we didn't bring up? And once Carol's done that, I think we'll move on to minutes, I think, is our last agenda. Right now. Documents used isn't listed. Okay. And we had quite a few documents. The letter from uh, zoning officer, building inspector, Mike. Yep, Burn. Burn. Um, or it was a memo, actually, that you wrote to him as the chairman of the ARB. Well, that's the one that was ultimately. Uh, so we don't need to put that as a document used. Uh, and then there no, was the okay. matrix I mean, of conditions. It's the one that was actually approved, so it should be on there. Well, right, and that's kind of the one I had at the beginning. We've been getting in the habit of just listing the documents, right? Then it would be the CONCOM letter on the, the marketing trailer site completion. And I, our letter was referenced from... Brian Rarick. It was one from Brian Rarick. It was one And from, from the ALT? Yep. Two separate ones? Yep. So Brian was writing as, not as the ALT representative? Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Brian's letter was the ALT, and then there was the CONCOM letter from... So there were two letters. Yes. Okay, yeah. this was ALT reading as though there were three letters. Yeah. So, let me get to that point. Okay, so I have just a few things. I think the chairman opened the meeting and you didn't turn to Jake Upton. You know what? You started to go so, through the matrix. Yeah, why don't I right? just, why don't I, or why don't I say, uh, I think how I read it, let me just read mine if I could. Uh, the chairman opened the meeting and introduced Jake Upton. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's fine. And then I said a new sentence. The board then went through, or you could say considered, then considered the matrix of requirements under the LDA and SBA that staff had prepared. Because I don't think we really say that anymore. So yeah, that's really yeah we helpful. just jumped right in here. That would be good. And then the, uh, the third line, Mr. Fitzsimmons asked what happens if there are fewer than nine sales by June 11th. Uh, I thought maybe we should explain what the June 11th was. Mm -hmm. So there are fewer than nine condo sales by June 11th when the listing is to end, or something like that. When the listing is. Yeah, uh, it's actually the the marketing, uh, the marketing date. The, the, Marketing period for the condo. Yeah, the market period. When the uh, marketing period is scheduled to end. The required marketing period. Uh, by June 11, 2004, 14, comma, the required marketing period. And did he state that he would extend the listing? He did not. No. Okay. Should we state that? I don't think. Because there's no answer to the question. 
he just said that a couple sales are dependent on the certificate of occupancy. And I couldn't remember what his answer was. I think that was his answer. That was it. <laughs> okay, so then I'll make some sense there. All right, then all the way down the third paragraph from the bottom starts with Mr. Upton stated that Beals and Thomas. I think we instead of did photometrics, we should say confirmed um, that the light photometrics conform to the plans for both affidavits that were signed. Confirm that the light photometrics conform uh -huh. to plans, design plans, because that's what they did, right? They con they were confirm confirming that when they signed the affidavits. And then Brightview's consultant, or we could state it just like Brightview's consultants has, consultant has certified with affidavits they were built to specifications. We could state it the same way as that one is. Well, I think you could say, I, actually, I think you make it even easier. Uh, Beals and Thomas did photometric analyses for both affidavits that were signed for the building. Brightview's, uh, or you could say these consultants certified with affidavits that they were built to specifications. Bills and Thomas and Brightview's consultants. They're different. The same. Oh, are they? The, see, that wasn't clear to me. It's, it sounds like Brightview's consultant was separate. I don't think they're the same. Bills and Thomas did two affidavits, it sounded like. Oh, okay. Maybe for mm -hmm. the temporary and then the final okay. certificate. And he hasn't done it. Yeah, maybe he's done two already. And then Brightview has a different level of consultant. Okay. I think as long as we're in that paragraph, we want to say that the spe specifications that they were built to were those specifications as approved by the ARB. Yeah, but that's what was confirmed. Uh, that's typically what we mean by yeah. specification. Did you get that card? No, but just, just, just try to be especially Mike's clear. text from what you just read. You can have it legible. You mean the thing up at the top, or? The, no, um, this up, paragraph. The third oh, paragraph. Oh, oh gosh, no, I just did that up the top of my head. Um, no, I mean, okay, I can Chris, copy it Christine, down. Christine, you can, I can make, why don't you make whatever changes you want? That's fine. I, can no, I, did, I thought notes. they were the same, so. We should just get in the habit of doing that. Okay, and then the second to the last paragraph, the first sentence, that the light can't extend, we should add beyond the property line. Who would leave that paragraph? Well, I know I said I was happy with these, but um, or is it Rick Gallagher, the designated town representative from Neighborhood Protection Plan? Um, for the Neighborhood for Protection Plan. Okay. Okay, then on the flip side, the one, two, three, fourth paragraph that starts with Ms. Friedman stated. That should did, be Mr. Kerr. I think that should be Mr. Kerr, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, that's the only other See that one? I don't have page two. Oh, don't you have don't? Okay, I'm going to give you this anyways. I'll, okay. I'll send it to you. And then the paragraph, right in the middle, Mr. Kerr stated that the ARB received letters from the CONCOM, Brian Rierig, and the Land Trust. I think it should be from the CONCOM and Brian Rierig of, of the Land Trust or for the Land Trust. Or you just say, you know, Arlington Land Trust. Get rid of Brian. Or Arlington Land Trust, Get rid yeah. Of Brian. Yeah, we didn't put a name on the other one. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Sorry if you're watching, Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry if you're watching, Brian, as well, just only because you were watching. <laughs> okay. And then the next very very short sentence, Mr. Kerr asked that the last sentence be corrected. I think that needs a little bit more. Uh, or I just think you could take it out, because I don't, I don't know what I corrected. Well, I you know, I think it's important. I think you... What did I correct? Um, of the memo to the ARB, from the ARB to the building inspector, to Mike... But that's burn. okay because we, we don't really need that in the minutes because the memo is what the memo is and that's what's going on right here. But we had that conversation about changing it from 3,500 to 10,000. Oh, okay. So that's and that's not really well, it's just, uh, noted here anywhere. It's noted that it is 10,000. Okay, we could just skip it too. That's fine. We could skip it. Yeah, sorry. I, I'm, I'm just... That's easier. Because I saw the same thing. I'm like, oh, okay. Then I had some two spellings, but I'll put that in the thing that I sent okay. to Amy. Thanks, I appreciate yeah. your willingness to do that. Oh, certainly. Andrew? Nothing further. Yeah, and I tossed in all mine when we were just doing that. Okay. So, uh, motion to approve as amendment. So moved. 
Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'll make a motion. That's our too. agenda for tonight. Adjourn. So, <laughs> yes. Am I jumping that? No, go. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.